Spicy Waffle, I'm Corwin. And I'm Uko. And we are back with Corwin's magical 52 games in one year adventure. And yes, I already have completed all 52 of those games. Already? Since then, I've completed a couple more. Yeah, I slowed down a little bit since the massive 52 game thrust that I did. And yeah, I'm putting it like that, a 52 game thrust deep inside of all of those 52 games. All up in your <laughs> Steam library. <laughs> Getting oh, them all yeah. wet and juicy. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But last time we left off with number 36, Lego Batman, the video game. And today we're going to be starting out with number 37, Doom 2. Yes, we finished. I'd never actually fully beaten Doom 2 prior to this. But, but now we have. we continue talking about it, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be discussing the game a little bit, giving a sort of shitty uh, review in some ways, at least the score. And then also seeing whether I would recommend it to Uko or not. So, starting off with number 37, Doom 2. Well, you know, I really can't say much about Doom 2 because Doom 2 is fucking fantastic. Just like Doom it just 1, is what it except is. I'll admit the beginning levels of Doom 1, I think the first, the knee deep in the dead part of Doom 1, I think maybe it's because they're so iconic to me and I played them so many times. When they were brand but I new. I think that they were slightly better than the beginning of Doom 2. And not like huge. Doom 2 had like, you know, the very first level was kind of small. It's like, it's not just kind of small, extremely fucking small. But then as the game moves forward, it especially really ramps once up you get into good. the deep into the deep into the sweet, sweet Doom 2 goodness, it's fucking gooey fantastic. Gooey Doom 2 goodness. Yeah. Gooey Doom 2 goodness. Uh -huh. You know, we also beat uh we also beat, aside from Doom 2, we beat the final Doom TNT Evolution. And I would say it was fun in the first half of it, but it wasn't nearly as fun in the second yeah, half. Did there the were opposite. some really shitty levels. Doom 2, though, it is an example of how even after after all of those years, the level design is still fucking flawless, okay? Absolutely. That's what it is. Amazing level design cannot be fucking topped, and it will stay timeless forever, okay? Which I guess that, that I don't know, what am I talking about timeless and forever? I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing. You're waxing forever, time yeah, poetic. I, I, look, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but the important thing is Doom 2 is fucking awesome, especially with all the mods that you can layer on top yes. of it. We played it with Project Brutality, most of it was like with like 2.5 or something like that, I think. I don't remember what version. It was fucking amazing. I would give it a 9.5 out of fucking 10. I agree. Doom is awesome. Doom 2 is awesome. Of course I'd recommend it to Uko because it's Doom fucking 2. He sat here and played it with me. Then, number 38, Doom 64. Yeah, we got we got a couple of Dooms squelched in together. next to each other, touching their sweet, wibbly-wobbly Doom MP titties against each other. It was such other. a surprise to me, because I didn't realize that it would be like Doom. I didn't realize Except it would be like different. Doom, but Quake. It's like, it's like if Wake. Doom and Quake, before they... It's like if Doom and Quake, before they came into existence, had some sort of, like, you know, baby together or something, in but it was a half-formed baby, and it wasn't quite right, and the first few levels were amazing, and the last few levels were amazing, but there was this gooey center of yeah, failure in I the agree. middle, and you were kind of like, why am I playing this game? It's not very fun. And at some point, we stopped and decided to play some Doom 2 instead. And then we were like, let's get back. And then the most amazing thing happened, which was as soon as we got back into it, the game got amazing again. Yeah, he just picked right like, up and yeah, was awesome. Doom 64, fuck yeah. More like Doom 69, having sex, got my dick up inside this Doom. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's what it was like. Okay, That's how I felt about it. So what I would say is we played Brutal Doom 64. We didn't play the original flavor Doom 64. I Brutal Doom that 64 I is probably, recommended. I wouldn't have liked Doom 64, the Originally. original, as much, especially played on the N64. I never owned Nintendo 64. Back then, we were like PC exclusive to the core. We were like throwing up PC gang signs. We had tattoos that's what we on were our doing. balls exactly. of PCs, everything. That's, that's what we were like back then. So, I, especially I, I, when I look at the uh, Nintendo 64 controller, my hands, they like they like start like you know hurting because of how horrifying the N64 controller looks that's not really about the game i would recommend brutal doom 64 to pretty much anyone but i'd only give it like a 7.5 out of 10 not because the brutal doom part wasn't amazing it was fucking awesome but because doom 64 just has too many shitty levels 
for me to in the middle whole, of it. Yeah. I, like somebody should do a director's cut, okay? I agree Where with that. Instead of the director's cut being longer like it normally it's is, shorter. the director's cut is shorter, unlike just, it like, normally fixed. is. Where instead you just snip out the shitty levels in the middle and you're like, man, this is nothing but a solid game from start to finish. And speaking of games that would be more solid, I think, with a little bit less number, I'll, I'll, I already gave it a score and I recommended it to Uko, but uh, number 39, Persona 5. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start this out by saying that I did not feel as loving toward Persona Five as as seemingly the entire rest of the internet did. It's kind of like how when when Jim Sterling gave Zelda: The Breath of the Wild a seven out of ten, and people went kind of crazy. I'm afraid of that happening with me so giving just Persona hold Five your torches a little. And but the thing is, till the end, okay. I, and I, and the thing is, at the beginning of the game, I was like, man. This game is slow, okay? This game is slow, nothing is happening, and it's trying to force its, like, oh, dude, I'm, like, so stylish, bro. Do you see all the style that's, like, oozing off of me? Everything's style, bro. It's, like, even, <laughs> even the fucking, even the stars and stuff coming out of my feet with the sparkling, they're styling, bro. But uh, but as the game went on, I, I, I started, the game sort of, to me, about... 20 hours in really picked up and that's saying something okay so still towards it really the beginning picked up, yeah, yeah still toward the beginning of the game <laughs> i ended up spending like 120 hours playing persona 5 it was a long fucking game midway through i was like man this game is fucking awesome i can't stop fucking playing it i'm addicted to it and then the game got toward its end. I'm not going to spoil it, especially given that it's a hundred and something plus hour yeah. game. It would be awful if somebody that were reading so it or listening oh my to this God. and thinking like, man, he's probably not going to spoil a game that I'm playing right now. But uh, I, I, so I'm not going to spoil it. But what I will say is I, I found the ending to be kind of disappointing and in no way satisfying. Sure, they wrapped up most of the things, but it was like the game just sort of consumed itself up its own magical asshole. That's what uh, it but did. Sort of okay, in, and not then, in the way that Nero Automata. It took like three hours to do it. Okay, that's what it did. It took like three hours to do it. I thought I'm on the final boss. Like the game's going to be over soon. But nope, shit tons more cutscenes still to fucking come. And I know that's the type of game it is. I'd never played a Persona game before. And I know that there's going to be someone out there who's thinking, you just don't enjoy your wacky Japanese video games. But oh, that's contraire. not true. I enjoy all sorts of wacky Japanese video games. I have watched ridiculous amounts of anime. So the thing is, I just... um. Well, I think I think that's more like why. It's because you have you've done so much of that stuff that you have very specific tastes, and I, that I think, falls no, outside of them. I think instead, it's just that the game makes you feel too much like you're on a schedule, and I know that's the thing with the game, but it didn't feel like a like a like a Dead Rising type of schedule where you got to be hustling constantly and you're always satisfied. Also, oh, it's but more of a regimented they, schedule. Well, it's raining, so I have to go study in the cafe while drinking a coffee. That's that's instead that's like so you know it's it's May the seventh and it's raining so go drink some fucking coffee in the cafe while you fucking study or else you're gonna fail at this game that's the that's the way the game felt to me okay <laughs> and that got intense and and so the thing is um I also I also hated some of the characters okay I know it's gonna sound like the most pervy sort of thing but I was like. I hate all of the male characters and I like all of the female characters. That's just the way. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. Yeah, okay? so I wanted to. I wanted to punch that blonde kid in his fucking face until he exploded. Okay, fucking Ryuji or whatever his name was. He can suck it. Okay, he can suck lovingly on my dick because I fucking hated him. But regardless, <laughs> uh, regardless of all of this, there were some really cool things about it, and the the sort of JRPG traditional it. gameplay was fucking awesome. And and I oh, and I really like that, liked that sort demon of, on the toilet. Oh yeah, the de and also the demon that looked like a giant penis. That was fucking sweet. Okay, it was fucking sweet. So I would say overall, I know that I talked about this game for a long time. So I have an orgasm of of like hate love for Persona Five. I'd at the end of the day give it like an eight point five out of ten. It's definitely not for everyone. If you think it's for everyone, then uh, then it, stay it stay but, far but away from why, it. This is why Uko told everybody to hold your torches and pitchforks exactly, till the exactly, end. 8.5, I did yo. like it, and I'm hoping that... May, I will go back and play some of the earlier ones. I'm hoping that they'll be a little bit less styling, bro! Because that was the part, it just really got to me, the style over substance sometimes. Then, and I would I would not recommend it to Uko at all. I would recommend it to other not people. Not my style? Not Uko's type of thing, especially for 120 hours. Okay, just, Fair no, enough. Fuck that shit. Anyway, moving on to number 40, Inside. 
I didn't know what to expect from inside. I still don't. We, we got it in the Humble Bundle, and I, I want to be a little bit spoilery here, but not fully spoilery. But it's it's like a side-scrolling puzzle game with elements of a little bit of platforming and then a little bit of not platforming. A lot of it's about timing, really. A lot of it comes down to timing. It's, it's a beautiful game, and... I, I, I didn't expect it to find it so beautiful. I know there's some other game that maybe it's not Braid. It's some, there's some other game by the same developer that I guess is in the same universe or something that I've never played. And we got in the humble, we got inside in the humble bundle and I knew it was like people gave it 10 out of 10s. And I, I'm going to go ahead and say right now that I agree with those 10 out of 10s. Absolutely. Cool. If you're going to give a game a 10 out of 10, especially given how short a game it was, absolutely. I think often, for me anyway, shorter games get an, have an easier time getting a 10 out of 10 from me because of the fact that they have less things in them that you don't like. So wait a minute. shorter. Did you really play one of these right after the other, this one right after Persona 5? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That so must like have been insane. One of the shortest like, games immediately insane. after one of the longest games on here. And um, I think it, it's, it's, it's about these, like... I don't know if there's aliens or maybe some sort of evil human conspiracy. I wasn't ever really 100% sure, but you're this little kid and you're running along and you're trying to get from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, okay? That's basically what it is. And it, you're thinking it's going to be like that for the entire game. And then, like, uh, first of all, you get, like, eaten by dogs and stuff brutally as this little kid, okay? Brutally eaten by fucking dogs. That's and harsh, And then you're, bro. like, pulling pigs around and stuff like that. And... And then people like shoot you and stuff like that. And, and then you start finding these zombie people and then you get to a factory and you can control them by like putting them, putting this sort of like mind control helmet on top of your head that you'll find occasionally and you control the zombies and you make them do things for you. And that's, that's, it's like a really, a lot of it's really light cool puzzles romp. with that. And then you get to where like you're controlling, uh, underwater submarine mini submarine type of thing and some sort of succubus thing humps it to death and everything it's it's crazy fucking wild and then at the end you transform into something that i'm not gonna explain but i'm insisting that uko in fact we might play it on the fucking channel okay it's a short game we might play it on the channel so that i can witness live Uko experiencing this thing that happens to your character at the end cool. that made me go like Ah! Ah! And then I was like, "Oh yeah, fuck all these bitches." That's the that was that was my response. So ten to it. out of so ten, you said. I, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna say a nine point five out of ten. I'm saying I, I don't disagree with the critical ten out of ten, but I'd give it a nine point five out of ten, and I would definitely recommend it to Uko. All right then. If you have inside from the humble monthly bundle, go fucking play it right now because it was awesome. Then number forty-one, Golden Axe Two. We played we this. We played Golden on Axe the One earlier on in the channel, and then we were like, later on, let's come back for some Golden Axe Two. And I actually enjoyed it more than Golden Axe One. Yeah, it was superior I thought all the in every way. The controls were a little bit tighter. The graphics were definitely better. Everything was just slightly better in every way, except for I thought the final boss was a little bit weak comparatively, and both in its difficulty and in its like I don't know its overall design. Not much else to say about Golden Axe Two. It didn't have a really cool ending thing where all the people jumped out of the screen and uh, ran away or whatever from the arcade like but the original game did. We can did. pass on but that. We can That's pass fine. on that anyway. I'd give it, even to this day, like a solid 7 out of 10. And I, I can't recommend it to Uko because we played it together. It's definitely the kind of game you want to play co-op. Number 42, Bayonetta. Bayonetta is one of those games where it came out on the Xbox 360 a bajillion years ago, and I tried playing it then, and I found myself like, man, this game runs like ass. I don't know what the fucking deal with it is. It pisses me off. Its gameplay is shallow. Fuck this shit, and I put it away. Now, I don't know if it's that I had like a shitty copy of the game or because I had a dying Xbox console or what, or if just everybody's Xbox 360 console played Bayonetta that way. But when I played it on the PC and it was running at like 60 frames per second at 4K, I was like, man, this game is fucking awesome. I love Bayonetta. The gameplay is actually quite comparatively deep and yet also shallow enough that you can just be like, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna sit back and play this game with my penis out. Oh yeah, <laughs> please don't stomp oh, yeah, on my penis with your slow heels. 
<laughs> and Bayonetta, you know, <laughs> despite what I, I originally thought Bayonetta was just like a really shallow character, but turned out to be quite charming and fun, okay? That's what I think about Bayonetta now. I really enjoyed it. I would say it's like a 9 out of 10 to me, okay? And I would definitely recommend it to Uko. All right, then. It's just the right length, not too short, not too long. That's just what the way the Bayonetta say about likes Uko. it, okay? And the other thing is... <laughs> The other thing is, this is a really weird thing, but there's this, there's this like male, like sort of pseudo romantic interest in the game. And this is a weird thing, but there's like never people in video games with hair like mine. And he had hair like mine. And he was also a total pervert, always, always hounding after the women's. And so I was like, man, this guy, he's like, he's like he my soulmate. Yeah. Okay. He's like <laughs> my soulmate, except he's not nearly as brash and insane as I am. <laughs> so yeah, I would, I would give, I would definitely recommend Bayonetta. It's fucking awesome. Then number 43, Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country. That's you that, played this look, back I, in the day. I once. played this back in the day. We remember, like we said at the very begin, beginning, replays of this, are okay. Replays are a okay. I had played Donkey Kong Country a long time ago, and what I found by replaying it is that it's absolutely as amazing as it once was. The fucking platforming is so tight and perfect that the I graphical wanted to make style sweet, is amazing. sweet love to it. The graphical style is amazing. Even to this day, it still holds up completely. Like you don't, you don't need to have some sort. In, in some ways, I think it looks better than the Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze thing that came out. I agree. Fairly recently. Oh yeah. Simply because of the fact that it's 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 just the art style is slightly better. That's just that's the, it feels a little bit more understated. Whereas Tropical Freeze feels very overstated. I haven't actually played it myself. I'm hoping to one day get my hands on a Wii U. We don't have a Wii U because the thing is, who would who would want to buy when you have all the consoles that I have? It just feels like I don't want to buy a Wii U. It's just not enough games that I want on it. I know there's probably people out there who love it, but the thing is, it's not our thing. Right not now. our thing. But Donkey Kong Country, it still lives up to being one of the best platformers of all time. I would recommend it to absolutely everyone. But what I found is that it was way, way easier than I remembered, okay? I remembered, the, I played it when I was a kid, and I remembered it, yeah, I being, remember it being fairly difficult. difficult too. But my, my memory of it now is, man, this game is ridiculously easy. And that's what I'm just gonna You've have to just leveled with. up. So yeah, I, I think I've leveled up. But it's a uh, I would give it I would give it like a nine out of ten to this day and recommend Uko replay it because it was fucking awesome I'm replaying gonna. it. Then number 44, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. And yes, that's one of those things that I always thought it was, was Diddy, Diddy Kong's, Kong's Quest. Quest yeah. But it's Diddy's Conquest. Mind blown. Okay? I never I just knew recently that. saw somebody else online talking about this just after I'd noticed it. It's like it a Berenstein Bears thing, you know? Totally beyond belief. And so that's like the most interesting thing to me about uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. I found at the time when I played it as a kid, I thought that it was better than Donkey Kong Country 1. But and now you I disagree never with fully, yourself? I never fully completed it. And I remember why is because I got stuck on one of the levels with all of the thorns. And the thorn levels, they are a pain in your, like the thorny foresty levels. They are a pain in my ass. I still dislike them rather intensely. And it's why I'll probably never replay Donkey Kong Country 2 or I'll just like cheat massively if I ever do, okay? That's <laughs> what I'll do. I'll cheat massively. It, um, It just, it was a really fun game still, but I didn't find it to be as enjoyable as Donkey Kong Country 1. I also thought that the final boss fight was beyond tedious, okay? It was beyond fucking tedious, and I just really didn't enjoy it very much. But uh, overall, I would still still give the game like an 8 out of 10, okay? I'd still give it an 8 out of 10. It was fucking awesome, and I recommend Ugo to play it, but just just, just go ahead and cheat ahead during and cheat. those levels. Okay, like, go ahead enough. and cheat. Then, number 45, Donkey Kong Country 3. The Donkey Kong Country went on a massive slide from 1 to 2 to 3. I think they That's changed, the, I they changed the graphical style too much in 3. It was still a fun game. They changed the graphical style too much in 3. Far too many underwater levels, and they were actually, I think, worse than the previous games, which is saying something 
underwater levels fucking suck, okay? Except for like Subnautica, which is all I that didn't way. Like the new cast of enemies. Like having having what's her name be the protagonist was totally cool. Even though I I, I always I always like it when you have either Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong, and I didn't like what's his name, okay? The baby Kong, okay? Fuck him. He kind of schemes was a, me out. Was, his character design. He was like, yeah. you, know what, you know what it was? It was like Donkey Kong himself was like, I'm gonna get drunk. And cosplay as a baby, and she totally fucking won't notice it. That's what it, that's what it fucking was, and it pissed me off. The the overall the gameplay was highly degraded. I found the boss fights to be ridiculously easy. It almost felt like they were going after a younger audience or something like that. So I would say it's like a six out of ten. I've like my buzz has harshed on it since I played it. I would still recommend that Uko try it as a lover of Donkey Kong Country, but just um. Don't try to 100% complete it, okay? Just don't, don't, for, ignore all 100%ing. Then, number 46, Metro 2033 Redux. This is another one of those games like Bayonetta that I had tried to enjoy in the past, but could not find a way to. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm playing all these games, I'm gonna go back and revisit this shit. And it was fucking amazing. I played with the Spartan mode, from uh, Last Light, where you, instead of instead of just being all like scrounging for ammo, you're just running around blowing shit up like a beast. I want to try warrior. that because you should try I, it. I played about two thirds of the way through uh, the original non Redux version, but then I had like a video card go turn into toast or something happened that I that like stopped me cold. Yeah, you physically. should try it with the Redux version. The graphics still hold up pretty well today. I found some of the boss, like semi-boss enemies, like those. There's like these big, gigantic, hulking motherfuckers who constantly run away when you shoot them. And I think technically, technically, you're supposed to just avoid them. But I was hell bent on all. killing all of them because if they're shit to, to be killed, I'm gonna fucking kill it. The one bone of contention that I have with the entire Metro series, and I hope they don't carry this on to the next game, is there's a bunch of like inexplicable shit that you gotta do to try to get the good ending. And I got the good ending in Metro 2033 Redux, and I didn't get it in Last Light. We'll go on about that in a second when I get on to Last Light. But I got the good ending. I went I went out of my way to get the good ending, and I didn't find it to be worthwhile to get the good ending. Okay. I had to listen in all I had to like stop. I it's a game where it's like, I'm gonna need you to stop and harsh your buzz for a second here and do these weird random things like listen into a conversation. It's like it's like you're a better person because you listen to someone talking about their lost puppy or whatever. You don't actually that go save the, the puppy or child what or whatever. Hell? So the thing is, you're instead of being out there actually doing things, you're you're dragging ass, and that makes you a better person. Fuck that shit. Altogether, I'd still give it like an 8.5 out of 10. It was fucking awesome. Play it and play it on the Spartan mode unless you love really, really slow gameplay. Nope. Number 47. I, I would recommend it to Uko. Excellent. Number 47, Metro Last Light Redux. It was like Metro 2333, except fucking You put better, an extra okay? three, yo. Okay, whatever, 2333333, see how you fucking <laughs> like that shit, bitch. It was like the original Metro game, except fucking better. That's the way I feel about it. Everything about the, the, the main thing for me that stood out was the graphical design. And I'm not just talking about like my pixels or anything, but in the original game, everything was sort of like flat and horizontal. But in the in in Metro 2033, everything was like here's like going up hills and or there's all sorts light. of like yeah. debris and stuff everywhere. That's cool. It was it it was like to me a graphical feast. Okay, that's the way I would describe it. Their art direction was off the fucking chain. Like the chain is on Venus and uh, the art direction is on Jupiter. That's how far off the chain it was. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, overall, I thought that in some ways, I thought in some ways the the overall like maybe level design was a little bit better in la in in, in two zero three three, even though it was graphically not as good. But I think that Last Light had more varied scenery that made it overall a much better game. I wasn't a huge fan of the story in Last Light. I was just like in it. I was like, fuck it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go balls to the wall, ignore all of the bullshit and uh, get the bad ending and then look the good ending up on YouTube. 
if you play these games, do, do it that, that way. Okay, okay? do it I'm that down way. With that. Because you get what I consider to be the true good ending, which is the one where you did it as fast as possible, as opposed to the fake good ending, which is the one where you did it as slow as possible. Also, you got to watch a stripper. Okay, that that that, that, that strippers always get a points for me. Post-civilization okay? nuclear. So I would say Metro stripper? Last Light, like eight point five out of ten. It was fucking awesome. Number forty-eight, an old classic from Spicy Waffle Land, Full Throttle Remastered. We were originally going to play this on the channel, and it just didn't work out for whatever reason. We it's too slow. It. And, yeah. One day, maybe we'll stream it or something like that. That would be a different thing, yeah. That'd be really cool. But uh, Full Throttle Remastered, it is one of my favorite games from when I was a child. And overall, it lived up to that. Overall, it did. There were a few things where I was like, man... As a child, I didn't mind being confused as fuck about what you do in this situation. That whole 90s puzzle yeah. game thing. Because it's like, it's like the moment where it's like, okay, well, uh, you know, uh, you got to like get inside of this. This is not an actual puzzle from the game, but it's like you got to get inside of this building by distracting the security guard. So what you have to go do is go over there and got to eat like a couple of fucking uh, sweet rolls from Skyrim. And then you got to have sex with two hookers, not three. And then tape and a feather then, duster to a chicken and, and let then, it loose. Then that the chicken pecks his eyeballs out when instead you could have just beaten him to death like a true champion warrior. So overall, I would say the remaster is really good. There were some people who hated the new uh, graphics in it. I loved it, especially loved the fact that it's got the, uh, you know, full actual widescreen. Because to me these days, I have a widescreen monitor. I have I don't have any 4x3 monitors left. Uh, so I want to play games in widescreen as much is, as I as possibly can. And the thing is, as far as the can. graphical style goes, it's clear that that at the time they would have wanted it to look like beautiful, crisp, DreamWorks animation style of graphics. Oh, it's yeah. Just they couldn't. It, they, they just absolutely fucking couldn't. And it looked, I, I thought the new one looked amazing. And all of the voice acting held up so well. Even Especially though the Mark timing Hamill. of the lines didn't hold up as well as you'd like because of the way that the old school games would be like, you know, somebody would be like, trigger the Hello, next line it's in a nice minute. to meet yeah. you. And then. Like, he sits there, you know, touching his nipples for a second, and then he's like, I'll kill you, bitch! And that, that somehow <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Well, but the I performance would say, is I, Yeah, the excellent. performance is excellent. Top I mean, tier. I had Mark fucking Hamill in it. Mark Hamill. But I was sad to find out that the guy who voiced the main character is dead. That just, that, that just like, Aww, that killed that my sucks. fucking boner. At the end, it was like, in memory of of the, this guy and i looked it up and it was the guy who voiced the, the guy who voiced ben made me really sad i loved one of the things i loved and didn't notice as much at the time when i played it back in the 90s was all of the sort of like uh star wars things that would, that would show up and like matt and sam and max things that would show up like some like a some biker or trucker or whatever would have uh imperial tattoo or something on his I didn't arm i notice that, was, that either that's awesome. cool so then i would actually i would give it i would give it like a nine out of ten purely out of nostalgia if i'm being more honest i'd be like a seven out of 10 based on today's standards but to me it's a 9 out of 10 and always fucking will be and i recommend ugo to replay it number 49 super mario world i had never actually beaten this game before when we were kids we didn't have an snes and uh so i would go down to my i would walk down the road and play games at my friend's house and what we played a lot of was the teenage mutant ninja turtles game which was fucking and awesome street fighter okay. 2 street, street fighter, fighter 2, 2 all damn day mortal Kombat, shit like that it was fucking awesome we had a pc but no consoles we like we went seriously i went from snes Any, no, or, or no, nes nes and then it was the next console i bought was a playstation 2 it was a long time between owning consoles and now i've got like a you know fucking playstation 4 xbox one and a switch i'm like i am fucking lousy with consoles okay i can't scratch my ass without a <laughs> console falling out of it i don't know why i'd be shoving consoles up, but whatever the fuck anyway <laughs> super mario world i'd never beaten it before i always got all the way to the end i think to me super mario world is one of those things where it was like it was like i need this in my life yeah when it came but out our, man. but our parents won't fucking buy a p an snes so fuck them. <laughs> that was what it was like. <laughs> that was what it was like when I was a kid. So like Super Mario World was was this like god tier thing that I always wanted to get my hands on, never really could. And when I finally got to replay it, I found it to be mostly not disappointing. What I found is that I didn't remember from as a child. 
I didn't remember Mario skating around the world to the degree that he does, okay? That's what I didn't remember. The, like with the, the cape and stuff, yeah. The wasn't nearly as tight as it was. No, I mean, like, he'd run up to a, an edge oh, oh, and, like and he's like, oh, like the slips fuck off. and wobbles, yeah. The platforming was not as tight as I found Donkey Kong Country to be, so playing it so soon after Donkey Kong Country, I found it to be a little bit disappointing. Overall, the game was fucking awesome. The final boss fight was just the right amount of difficulty, so there's no complaints there. Overall, to this day, I'd still give it like an 8.5 out of 10, and I would recommend that Uko not play it, because he's already played a whole bunch of it in the past. I never so quite beat just it, fucking but just, yeah, just, just, fine. Just stay away, from, keep it in your memories as it is, because unlike Donkey Kong Country, you'll be disappointed by how it is in reality. Aww. Then, number 50, Batman Arkham Knight. This is a game that I had originally intended to play right after it came out, and then the PC version was a total mess. It was a total and unremitting mess, but today it runs perfectly on my computer, and it looks fucking astonishing. Yeah, I was okay? watching him play it for a while, it and I was just like, be my mind was blown. Even like a couple years after it came out, it has still got to be one of the best looking games. Like, I thought last year that Doom and Uncharted 4 looked really good, but I would definitely not say that they look better than Batman Arkham Knight. There's n there's no way they look better than Batman Arkham Knight. They just look as good. Yeah, it the looks... Game, the game I mean, when it starts raining, okay, it's oh, just oh, yeah. incredible. It's freaking beyond belief. I didn't find the whole thing with the Batmobile to be as odious as a lot of other people did. I didn't really enjoy the parts where you run around the city and... You have to, like, find the firemen and stuff like that. That was a little bit weak. And I also just, I don't like the whole, when the plot decides to revolve around various things, like, there's an inevitability. The Joker is going to take over Batman's brain forever. I, da, da, da. I, just, uh, I just don't really like that kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't. I, I didn't really enjoy the thing with the Arkham Knight that much. I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't played it. I thought it got it got really good at the end when they finally decided to do the actual. I, I knew who he was long, long. I, I know a little bit about Batman. And I knew who he was long before they revealed it. So for me, it was like, man, it sure is a mighty, uh, mighty jerk off here trying to wait for them to reveal this shit that I figured out several thousand hours ago. But overall, the game was amazing. The the combat was still every bit as tight as it was. The one thing that really stuck negatively with me, negatively with me about it was the DLC. Now, I know that a lot of people complained at the time the DLC was incredibly short for the amount of money you paid for it. I got it from bundle stars i think for like nothing okay it was they were like they were basically for a while and maybe even still various people were they couldn't give batman arkham knight away for the pc so i got it really cheap but the um the batgirl dlc which is the one i wanted to play the most it had a horrifying crashy bug that Aww. forced me to replay through the entirety of it in Weak. order to actually get it done and you have to like speed play through it because if you don't get past a certain point in time it will crash and there is nothing you can do about it oh that's so like my video card was setting on fire or something like that but nope it was just the game and they will never they will apparently they're done they're done patching the game and they will never patch that part i also found the harley quinn dlc to be incredibly disappointing and that it was really boring playing as her. That's 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 sort of I would say it's like an 8.5 out of 10. I know I've given a lot of 8.5 out of 10s here, but I did try to pick games that I thought would be really enjoyable when I was going on this quest, and I would recommend it to Uko, but only after he's played the other Arkham games because it would make Excellent. no fucking sense well, to play it now. Number 51, Demon Front. This is one of those short but sweet things. We decided to play it because somebody recommended it on the channel. It's one of those games where I would say that overall, it's, it's a Metal Slug clone, and overall I would say it, it's it's the best Metal Slug clone it, I've it ever played. It does that job completely. It That's does the that thing. job That's completely. It, surprisingly. But sadly, its art style falls really flat, and the combat just is not there. It's just not there. We're still really and glad it exists, and really glad it got recommended like, and played no, and stuff. Yeah, we, we still, it was really fun to play as the co-op thing. Don't play it solo. If you play it solo, it'll just be a hollow and shitty experience i think i i, I wouldn't agree. play it solo. I do agree. it wouldn't be worth your time as a solo game it's fun to like rub shoulders with someone and play it but overall it's not that great a game i would say as a co-op thing it's like Definitely. a 6.5 yeah. out of 10 
and as a solo thing like a five out of ten that's what i'd say about demon front i agree i'm really glad we got to play it but i will never play it again then number 52 yakuza 2 you may be wondering i played yakuza 0 and i loved it and there's no yakuza 1 on this list well there's a story there's there. two reasons behind that first i've already played a large portion of yakuza 1 back in the day but I never actually finished it. It was a long time ago. And two is that when when I finished Yakuza 0, I was thirsty for more Yakuza. Okay? I was like, man, I need this shit in my life. Ah! And that was basically the way my <laughs> brain felt about it. And then I immediately, I was like, okay, well, do I have to go back and play a PS2 game? Because to me now, PS2 games especially when I knew that the original game had locked cameras as opposed to free look. That seems kind of horrifying to me and I didn't want to do it with like horrifying frame rate problems and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I looked to see if there were any remasters and it was like, well, there are some remasters that exist in Japan, but uh, the consensus at the time was like, no one will, they will never be brought to America ever. So I was like, fuck it. I don't need to play any fucking PS2 games. This will teach and, you to listen to the internet, by yeah. the way. But I mean, Sega sort of had an attitude right then of like, this was before Yakuza 0 turned out to be a huge success in the West. So I, I, I was like, man, fuck it. I don't need to play PS2 games. I'm just going to watch the recaps of Yakuza 1, okay? And so, so I did, did that. Oh, and yeah. like five minutes after I was done, they were like, Yakuza Kiwami, the remake of the original Yakuza 1, coming to America this August. And I was like, such a burn. A and here's the thing, is we between us have a copy of Yakuza 0. Yeah, so so Corwin finished, finished playing, playing it, Uko started playing So it. I was in the middle of it when all this was happening to Corwin. Yeah, so, so Uko <laughs> didn't end up spoiling himself. Yeah. So I was like, okay, now that I've already spoil spoiled Yakuza 1, I'm going to play Yakuza 2 since it's only one PS2 game and I'm just going to fucking play it. And I turned out to be shocked by how good it was, okay? I can't believe I didn't play it at the time. I can't believe I didn't enjoy Yakuza also, 1 at the time. When, when I took some, you know, careful, no, non-spoilery looks at it while he was playing it, I was amazed at how... How similar the game is exactly. to Yakuza, Yakuza the locations, 0. Exactly. Okay? The characters, locations, the stuff, the design, everything. The, the fighting, animations. Even the animations yeah. are clearly inspired by the original game. Uh, the giant traffic cone? Yeah, it's the giant, there. The giant traffic cone from Yakuza 0 is in Yakuza 2. I assume it's in Yakuza 1. It's probably in, like, the historical set Japanese, you know, feudal yeah, period it's game. It's probably made of bamboo. Yep, it's pro there's probably some shit like that in, in even those games with the gigantic traffic going seriously. Now listen, if Sega's listening, please, 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 bring those games to America. We will love you we forever. We are begging you. Yeah, I, that's like, then, then again, we're hardly the only people asking for that shit. Yakuza 2, I was amazed by it, okay? The game, I, I played it on the PS2 emulator, and apparently, even though, even though I played it on the emulator, the original game apparently ran at 60 frames per second on the PS2, so I would That's have had a very of, similar experience. Actually, a lot of games ran at 60 frames per second on the PS2, and the game was remarkably advanced for a game from, like, 2006 on the PS2. I really, really, really enjoyed it, and even if they never fully remaster Yakuza 2, Uko should play it. If you played Yakuza 1, right, play then. Yakuza 2. It was amazing. There was this thing, like a time capsule of mid-2000s gaming that I had never actually really touched. And when I played it, it turned out to be amazing. And the storytelling was not as good as in Yakuza 0. That makes sense to me, given how much experience they have now. I would say that it's 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 more like an 8.5 out of 10 game as opposed to like a 9.5. Since then, I've gone on and played Yakuza 3 and Yakuza 4 on the PS3, and I'm playing Yakuza 5 right now, and it's fucking amazing. Seriously, it's like it's like this game with five protagonists, and you can fucking do anything in it, right? You can do dance battles as a 17-year-old girl on the path to being a pop idol. You can do hunting on some sort of Japanese frozen mountain. You can do loan sharking. You can you can do whatever your dreams tell you. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what it's like. Okay, it's, uh, also uh, it's like baseball. a drug trip. 
Europe. Yeah, you can play baseball as a guy who was disgraced for baseball gambling. Okay, you can, <laughs> you can, you can, you can be anything. You can visit a sexy massage parlor and probably catch STDs. But yeah, I, I would give Yakuza 2 like an 8.5 out of 2. Definitely recommend it to Uko. We're going to stop here. That's my 52 game journey. This has been like a 39 minute vlog. I've been like probably Good. running out of steam a little bit here at the end because my voice is like, eh, eh, kill me, kill my voice. <laughs> Not killing your throat. No, no killing my throat. I need it to make YouTube video. But we're going to stop here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that sexy thumbs up button. Spicy Waffle signing out.